Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Looks like everybody is still lazy. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jojo. Come and sit here now. We are beginning our gospel commentary. So today the gospel is from St. Mark. Chapter 3, verses 31 to 35. Okay, listen up. The mother of Jesus and his brothers arrived at the house. Standing outside, they sent word to Jesus and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, Your mother and your brothers are, and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Okay, a few things we need to clarify, okay? When uh, the Jews say brother, sister, mother, it does not necessarily mean that they are siblings, okay? The word for, uh, the word uh, in Hebrew for uh, such relatives are the same for the word for siblings, okay? So we know very well that our Lord was the only uh, son of the Blessed Virgin, and that uh, the Blessed Virgin was a virgin before, during, and after the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay, so there was no other, there was no other uh, sibling to Jesus, and that what Jesus refers to here, what Saint Mark refers to here in this gospel about brother, sister. Uh, of Jesus are actually his relatives. And let's put the whole thing into context. Jesus has been going around, um, you know, proclaiming the kingdom of God. Right? He has been preaching. And perhaps his mother, who he had left behind, was uh, longing to see him. And his relatives were longing to see him because they haven't seen him in a long while. So what do they do? Instead of waiting for Jesus to come back home, they decided, well, let's go where he is. Let's go and pay him a visit. There, right there in the middle of all of his preaching, let's go and try and pay him a visit and say hi. Right? We miss him, so let's say hi. That's what Our Lady and his uh, Jesus' relatives perhaps wanted to do. And so they make a journey. They go wherever he was, and they found him in, in that place where he was preaching. And they were there to say hi. Right? But look at how Jesus reacts. Here is the second misconception of people. They think that Jesus dismissed Our Lady. They think that Jesus did not give importance to his own mother and said, Ah, forget it. Let them wait. I'm busy here preaching. Let my mother wait. No, that was not the intention of Jesus. And that was not the context of which uh, he said, who are my brother and my uh, sister and my mother? It is not a dismissive comment. Rather, it was precisely a comment made to exalt Mary, to praise Mary for being the most faithful and, uh, and obedient in fulfilling the will of God. Okay? So when our Lord said, well, who is my mother, my brothers, my sisters. And he looked around and saw his disciples and said, these guys, these are my mother, my brother, my sisters. Because whoever it is who does the will of my father in heaven, he is my mother, my brother, and my sisters. So our Lord wanted to emphasize the importance of doing the will of God all the time, doing the will of God, obeying the will of God for us. So our Lord again emphasizes here the virtue of obedience, obedience to the will of God. And I want to point out um, one, one cause, what rather one effect of disobedience. You know, one effect of disobedience is alienation. 
alienation. When we disobey, when we disobey anybody, anybody in authority, like our own parents, for example, when we don't do the will of our parents, we alienate ourselves from the family. We separate ourselves voluntarily from the family when we disobey the head of the family. We do the same thing in, in anything, like in society. You disobey the laws of society, the rules of society. You are alienating yourself, voluntarily alienating yourself from that society where you belong, where you should belong. You do the same thing in a corporate situation or structure. When you don't obey the rules of your company or the place of work, you alienate yourself from your own company, from your own boss, from your own colleagues. So disobedience to rules, to regulations, to people in authority is self-alienation. It is self-alienation. You are causing your own alienation from the community and the group you should belong to. So in other words, you are, you are imputing on yourself your own punishment for disobedience. And the same thing is true now with God. See? So when we don't do the will of God, we are, we are uh, imputing upon ourselves the punishment of being alienated from God. And from the family of God. See? We, instead of belonging to the inner circle, so to speak, right? Like the disciples who were part of the inner circle of Jesus. And he considers them his brothers, his sisters, his family. If we alienate ourselves from Jesus Christ, from the will of God, then we are outside of that circle. We don't belong to the family. That is why uh, it's very important for us to live up to the will of God and follow, obey, and, and, and be uh, faithful to the will of God all the time. And that will of God is communicated to us in many different ways in all of our community involvements, beginning from the family to our place of work, to our society, you know, and it just gets bigger and bigger from there, right? So, but it begins from the home. It begins from the home by your obedience to your parents. And so that you really become part of the integral family instead of alienating yourself okay? and, get, and putting yourself outside of the family voluntarily. Okay, so he was looking around and says, you know, where are my brothers and my sisters? It's those who do the will of God. Perhaps a question we have to ask ourselves is, well, how do we obey the will of God? How do we even know what the will of God is? Right? Okay. Huh? I'll give you three things to consider. Three things, uh, three general things to consider and to think about as far as the will of God is concerned. Okay? The first way we will know as to whether we are abiding by the will of God or not is when we are living up to our own nature. See, God created everything. Right? God created everything. So, if we live up to the nature of how things should be, then we are obeying the will of God in a general sense. Okay? Uh, let us just break this down to, to be more concrete about it because uh, uh, I know that that's a general statement. For example, if you're create, you were created by God to be a man, <laughs> live up to your nature as a man. If you're created to be a woman, live up to your nature as a woman. So nowadays, we got plenty of these LGBTQ, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, I don't anymore know how many categories of so-called uh, um, other sex or other alternative uh, expressions of sexuality there is, uh, well, it, that is a clear violation of the will of God. Because God only created two genders, man and woman. You are either one or the other. You cannot be both or in between or somewhere there. No. So that, in a, that alone, 
That alone is a clear disobedience to the will of God. And you cannot claim like, oh no, I feel like this. I feel like that. I am a, a man or a woman trapped in somebody else's body. Well, <laughs> besides the fact that it's funny and you appear foolish, well, you are violating the will of God. Period. There's no other, no other discussion that uh, needs to be made, right? So you cannot make a cat a dog or a dog a cat, right? Uh, why? Because God created a dog to be a dog and a cat a cat. Could you imagine all of a sudden a cat wants to become a dog? It cannot be, right? Because that is nature. Nature, nature, nature. So everything has its own proper nature. And you cannot violate that nature because that was how God created that thing to be. So obedience to the will of God in that regard is following your nature. Okay? Well, there are many other expressions of this, but I just wanted to give that example because nowadays, uh, nowadays January, you know, plenty of these things are going around. We have had that March for Life, and then now the March for Women, and then all sorts of other marches happen in January, <laughs> all in, all about the nature of man. Okay, second way by which we will know whether we are abiding by the will of God is if we abide by our vocation. By our calling, all of us have a vocation from God, a calling from God. And all of you will also have your own specific vocations as you grow up. Joe, what's your question? How will you know, will you know the will of God if you don't even know your vocation? Yeah, well, we'll get to that later. Okay, you precisely, we will get to how you will know it later. But first, let's, let's, set, let's talk about... What ways you will do, the, the, how you will fulfill the will of God. So the second one is fulfilling your vocation. So if God called you to become a married person, okay, the married person, well, fulfill your vocation as a married person, as a father, as a mother. If God called you to be a priest, be a priest. If God called you to be a nun, be a nun. If God called you to be a single person serving other people in the middle of the world as a single person, be that and be faithful to that. Okay, so here again is an, ex is an example of how people can violate their vocation. Okay? Yesterday we were talking about uh, um, uh, babies, right? And, and, uh, and um, abortion. abortion, right? Because uh, the, our bishops asked us to pray for the end of abortion. Well, look, people who get into marriage and then they don't want to have children. What's that? Violation of their vocation to marriage. See? So if you violate your vocation, you are not living up to the will of God. So if you got married, the very purpose of the vocation of marriage primarily is the uh, engendering of children and the education of children. So if couples get into marriage immediately with the mentality of, oops, it's either I don't like to have children or... You know, I'd rather have dogs. <laughs> or, uh, oh, I will limit my kids to only two. But wrong, 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 wrong. You're entering your vocation uh, uh, fr from the wrong perspective immediately. So immediately, right from the get-go, you are violating the will of God. See? Because that is not the will of God for the vocation to marriage. Now let's speak of priests. If you are a priest, we are supposed to be the minister of God, the minister of his sacraments, the minister of his word. But if you don't prepare your homilies well, hey, priests, well, you are not obeying, you are not living up to your vocation as a priest. If you, uh, if you avoid ministering the sacraments, like when you leave the line of communion and you don't want to serve in communion or you let the lay ministers uh, do the job for you, well, you are not fulfilling your job as a priest, your vocation as a priest. If you leave the preaching of retreats, of recollections, of, of uh, other spiritual direction uh, 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 matters to lay people and you go to the beach and go to vacations all the time, you are not living up to your vocation as a priest. Plain and simple. So, 
We have to live up to our vocation. That is part of obeying the will of God. Our lady is a very good example of precisely these things we're talking about today. Right? She lived up to her vocation. With all the sacrifices that it entailed, she lived up to her vocation. She lived up to her nature as a virgin because God created her to be so. She was a virgin from before, during, and after her birth. And she committed herself to that. See? So, okay. Now, what is the third way by which we will know we are living up to the will of God? The third way. The third way is to fulfill your duties every day. Every day. To fulfill your duties in everyday life. Whether that be in fulfillment of that vocation you were given. So, every day uh, uh, you, you do what you're supposed to do. Or in your work. Okay? Or in your duties to society, in your duties towards other people. In your everyday life, there are always things that will tell you whether you're doing the right thing. And if you're doing the right thing, you're doing the will of God. Okay? So all of these, these three general things are indications of uh, fulfilling the will of God in our lives. And what I would have to make, to assure you is that if you only abide by the will of God, if your default setting here is to do the will of God first before my will, I can guarantee you God is going to reward you a hundredfold and more, overflowing in all of God's rewards and generosity towards us. If we are obedient and generous towards God, God, as I was saying yesterday, will never be outdone in generosity and He's going to reward us a hundredfold and more okay, beyond our wildest imagination. So let us always be uh, obedient to the will of God. And look at Our Lady. Look at all the saints. They have all received their rewards. All because... They were obedient and faithful to the will of God. Remember those things. Be sensitive. Be sensitive to the will of God. Okay? Instead of giving in to our own desires and our own likes and our own whims, let us always ask ourselves. It's a very good question to ask all the time. Is this what God wants me to do now? Is this what God wants me to do at this moment? At this juncture in my life, at this point, today, at this time, is this what God wants me to do? It is a question that we always have to ask ourselves many times in our lives, many times in our day. Every day, every minute. When you hear that alarm ring, right? Oh, what does God want me to do now? Huh? Joe. <laughs> okay? He wants you to do this, to do that, you know. Follow your schedule. That's following your schedule is the minute by minute reminder of what God wants you to do. See? But anyway, there are more things that we can talk about this, but we're out of time. We gotta rush to mass now, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, everybody, done with breakfast? Let's go. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.